It's a day a lot of people didn't think they would see, including Jeffrey Pearson. <laughs> the Cincinnati Reds are in the playoffs. In this episode, we take on the Mets in the NLDS. It is tremendous to finally see this team at this point, you think, of some of the names and faces that we've seen come and go, from the Steven Riders to the Mason Dennebergs, but this was the squad to finally live up to their potential, winning 95 games and the NL Central outright. It is a wonderful sight to see. But we are not here to just be like, yeah, okay, cool, we made it. No, we're here to compete. We're here to win, or at least, I hope. Getting to a couple of your comments before we take a look at the lineup and the Mets as well. Poo, poo equals pew. I will remember that. Marlon Pew. Gotcha. I put Quinlan leadoff with Edwards at fourth was uh, the other part of Pearson's comment, Jeffrey Pearson's comment as well. Um, well. We'll talk about that once we get to the actual lineup itself. So there is that. Archie May got robbed of the MVP. I agree. <laughs> I didn't want to say too much. I'm like, ah, maybe not. Maybe I'm biased. No, uh, maybe we're all biased together. But we have our first real controversy outside of me letting go of Steven Ryder. Archie May was robbed. I'm all for changing primary or secondary positions to whatever fits the team needs as a human life, but changing Marlon's secondary position also changes throwing handedness. Indeed. Uh, that was pointed out as well by clearly the real Zidane Chara. So what I'm going to do is switch his handedness back, even if that kind of screws up his defensive efficiency, but I will switch it back. So apparently, yes, indeed, when you switch a player position, it can switch the handedness. So that's cool, I guess. Um, do you think it's true to the series if you trade for a player that you drafted but walked away from? No, I don't. I think that's a part of it, is those regrets. You look at, say, the California Golden Seals and the regrets over not drafting Eli Maroon, the goalie who ended up winning cups in Nashville. That's a part of the series, man. It, it needs to sting when you don't select somebody or when you let someone go and then they find success. That's a part of it, as torturous as it is. And Tom Lau in single is at a 71. You should probably put him in double. Indeed. Uh, it was his last season in single, um, which just because he was still developing. But yeah, he'll be up in double, if not triple, next season. We'll worry about that then. For now, let's talk about the team. I want to start off with the rotation because there's a lot less to talk about. Carrasco, Bailey, and Manzanillo are the top three, obviously. So getting to the lineup... <clears throat> And like I said, Ryan Minister will recognize this lineup because I, I agree with his suggestions. The debate for me was Edwards in the four spot. So basically it was either Edwards in second or we go with this. But I like the idea of Archie May in the four spot enough that I am going to put Graham Edwards second. And this also does provide us that nice bounce between ref, uh, lefties and righties. Refties? Lefties and righties in the lineup. There was the debate as well whether or not Marlon Pugh should be in the lineup over Ramon Vasquez. I'm going to give him the opportunity. Vasquez is in as a DH, which does not affect anything at all because, of course, we're in the playoffs. So we shall see what happens. I mean, again, I don't necessarily like having Vasquez on the bench because he is a big power hitter. So the the rope here for Marlon, there's not a lot of leeway. He has to deliver, or we're pulling you out of the water, buddy. And Vasquez, we're throwing you into the deep end, known as the playoffs. After, I mean, again, your first true season here with the team was cut short due to injury. So that is what the squad is looking like. The question is, what does the competition look like? Let's take a look at Demetz. This is the rotation, and obviously, we are outmatched. Cole Stewart's a 92, coming off of a 12 and 12 season with a 3.55 ERA. Mike Correa at an 85 overall. Pretty poor season, though. 7 and 9 record with an over 5 ERA. And Baria, 14 and 9, had a pretty strong season, 90 overall. They also have the rookie Cordova which is uh, ridiculous. In terms of the bullpen, we're not bad, right? We're not bad. They're just better. 
that is a ridiculous bullpen. I know they signed Jason Comstock in last year's free agency. Just, yeah. I mean, what do you want? Like, the, we probably aren't going to win this. <laughs> Man, it would be it would be an upset, even with uh, who should be the reigning MVP. Lineup-wise, this is what we're dealing with. Joe Adele is their leadoff man, the 29-year-old. Hit 255 this season, 29 home runs. Jesus, 310 on base. Gavin Lux at second. Would it be Lux or Lux? Not entirely sure. He had a decent season as well. Bryce Tarang. Tarang, Tarang. The 29-year-old hit 30 home runs this year. Steel Walker, which is an amazing name. The 32-year-old, 26 home runs, 94 RBIs on the season. Brett Phillips is a 93 at 34 years old. 31, 81, and a 257 average. Hideki Kimura, the 79, 26-year-old. 14, 49, and a 273. Cole Stobie, the Stobies. 16, 55, and a 266. Francisco Mieja, an old face from the Blue Jays series, hit 253, 65 RBI on the season. On the bench, you got Terrell Bond, Brent Spillane, Riley Adams, Joe Gray Jr., and Yu Chang. We are a good team. They are probably better. I have faith in our squad, but in terms of who the favorite is, I don't know, man. I just don't know. I mean, we only won two more games than they did, so I can't say with certainty that we are any better, but this is happening. Let's do this. I was hoping to get a look. I mean, it'd be nice you know, to see the overall ratings, essentially, for what it is, but... It comes down to this. There's no more time to waste. We're getting right into this. Our first ever undisputed playoff game in this series. The NL is stacked. I mean, you think about what Pittsburgh has done throughout this entire series, how stacked San Diego is. For us to be essentially in the final four of the NL is a major accomplishment. For us to be hosting this first game is a major accomplishment, but I just don't know what more we can expect. I really don't. Let's do this. Let's do this. What does this team have in store for us? As uh, you can tell, how much I've actually played hashtag played the game this year with that dynamic difficulty. Here we go. Here. We go. Joe Adele leads off. He flies out. Gavin Lux grounds out. Tarong singles with two outs. Steel Walker strikes out. Strong start for Carrasco. Joe Quinlan leading off. He strikes out. Edwards with a single. Oh, you have no idea how badly I want to steal. <laughs> so badly. Bobby singles. Archie May. The MVP chance will ring out through the ballpark. Singles, and the runner scores. Three straight singles. Edwards, Bloom, and May. And the red strike first. Brian Lopez with one out. Doubles and brings home Bloom. And the offense has arrived early. May and Lopez in scoring position. One out. Marlon Pugh with the three-run shot. Let's go. You want to talk about taking him out of the lineup? Not with that. Five hits, five nothing Cincinnati in the bottom of the first. Unbelievable start against the Mets and Cole Stewart. Henry Shipman walks. Glenn Huff walks. Obviously, Mark Wahlberg's wearing a hat. Uh, <laughs> We will obviously uh, we'll obviously bunt here with Mr. Carrasco. He moves the runners up. Joe Quinlan, I believe in you, sir. You struck out last time up. Come on. Yes! Two more unscored. Seven to nothing. This offense is ridiculous. Graham Edwards singles. Runners at the corners with one out. Two outs in the bottom of the first. I mean, Bobby Bloom singles. It's eight to nothing. This is ridiculous. Archie May. And that's it. That is it. 
Oh my god, they bring in Miguel Castro. Archie May strikes out to end it. Eight to nothing through the first inning. I would hope this is on the same difficulty. It's always been on dynamic as far as the sim. So I would hope that doesn't affect like, hey, this is why your team is doing really good. Uh, if it is, then I will make sure to bump it all the way up. But considering I'm not the one playing, I doubt it affects it, but it's eight to nothing. Brett Phillips leads off of the Mets with a single. Hideki Kimura singles. Stobie strikes out. Mieya flies out. That's the Mieya in the playoffs that we all know and love. Castro doubles. Wow. A two-out, two-RBI double for the pitcher, Miguel Castro. Adele ends up striking out to get us out of the inning, but two runs there off of the two-out, two-RBI double. Lopez walks. Marlon Pugh into a fielder's choice. Shipman lines out, Huff strikes out, so not a very uh, strong inning in comparison. Lux with the walk, Tarang strikes out, Walker strikes out, Phillips with a two-run shot, and it's a four-run game all of a sudden, and Carrasco needs to get his game together. Kimura with a double, Stoby grounds out, it's eight to four through two and a half innings. Carrasco singles, not bad, the pitcher's getting involved. Quinlan walks. Edwards singles, and unfortunately, Carrasco tagged out at home. Bobby Bloom with one out into a double play. Eight to four through three innings. We'll see if the Mets can get anything going here. Two out single for Adele. No, they cannot be on that. Archie May strikes out. Lopez with a single. Marlon flies out. Shipman flies out as well. So still eight to four through four innings. Carrasco might not be on the mound for that much longer. As Tarang walks, Walker into a double play, and Phillips strikes out. Justin Schaefer brought on in relief. Glenn Huff leads off with a strikeout. Carrasco is pinch hit for. Here's Bryant K. He strikes out. Quinlan with a two-out single. Edwards flies out. So Carrasco's day is over as we head to the top of the sixth. Chad Padilla brought on to face Kimura. He strikes him out. Stoby with a ground out. Mieya with a fly out. To the bottom of the sixth we go. Bloom with a walk. May with another strikeout. He's one for four in this game. Lopez strikes out. Pew also goes down. As that's it. Napoleon Gillis brought on. And Bren Spillane brought on as a pinch hitter. Gillis singles. Or Gillis singles. Spillane singles off of Gillis. Adele into a field of choice. Lux walks. Tarang into a field of choice. Runners at the corners with two outs for Walker. As Chris Velez is brought on to face the lefty, and it's a ground out. So there we go. Paul Fry brought on for the Mets here in the bottom of the seventh. Henry Shipman strikes out. Huff strikes out. Jimenez brought on, who strikes out as well. Norman Garner in to set things up. Phillips with a leadoff triple. Kimura grounds out. Stoby grounds out. Mieya singles. The runner scores. The lead's down to three. As Will Vincent's brought on early. Paul Fry is uh, pinch hit four, hits Terrell Bond brought on, and Vincent strikes him out. So Quinlan leads off the bottom of the eighth. He'll face Pedro Arujo. Quinlan pops out. Edward strikes out. Bobby Bloom strikes out, and here we go. It's down to Will Vincent. If this was a series-ending situation, I'd watch it. Maybe we'll watch it with two outs, but let's see what happens here. Vincent against Adele. It's a strikeout. Lux with a one-out double. Tarang strikes out. The Mets are down to their last out as I want to see Will Vincent end this. 8-5. to five. We have not scored a run outside of the first inning. It's a first pitch strike. 96 mile an hour fastball on the inside corner here. Our rainy game one of this series. And here we go. Rally towels are out. No ponchos needed. Vincent, the pitch. It's fouled off. 0-2 count coming up. Vincent brought on early. Unfortunately, Norman Garner wasn't exactly on point, but that's okay. Can Vincent seal the deal? The 0-2. Chopper to third. The throw on to first. And the Reds take game one off the back of an unbelievable first and in Carrasco gets the win, of course. Wasn't the best performance from him. The Mets offense did show up, but it just was not enough to overcome that dominant first inning. An unbelievable offensive explosion. Again, game one, 
goes to your Reds. We are two wins away from the NLCS. Carrasco to win. Marlon Pugh with the three RBI on the home run is your player of the game. So there we go. That three-run shot. His only, his only hit of the afternoon. <laughs> but he got the job done. Will Vincent with the save. It's about damn time Will Vincent has a postseason save, don't you think? But you look there, Shipman, Huff, both players who are potentially replaceable, especially Huff with the three strikeouts. I might give Bryant Kay an opportunity. I know it's a little bit harsh to drop someone off of one game, but Huff and Kay were very close throughout the entire season. So I don't think it's totally unfair. Shipman's somebody who will have another chance. In fairness, Abreu is a switch hitter, so that's, that's not bad. And K is also a righty, so... Hmm. You know, I think we are going to make that uh, that change. Bryant K is going to be brought on. Nobody else plays an outfield position. So yeah, Bryant will get the opportunity. Huff is going, and in fairness, with the DH spots, it doesn't matter what. Huff's going to take a seat for this game. And Bryant K gets a strong opportunity here. In game two, Joe Bailey squares off against Mike Correa. Let's see what happens here. Again, uh, not, not an amazing performance, but it was good enough to get the job done. Bailey rocking an 88 overall right now. Bryant K in the lineup in right, and in fairness, Archie May, and he should switch. So there we go. Just to have them in the natural positions. Game two, a huge opportunity to take a 2 to nothing series lead with us to New York. Or will the Mets tie this one up and essentially make it a best of three? So we're looking at Henry Shipman to step it up a little bit, looking for a better performance out of Archie May. I know it was one game, but still, it's a weird game. As far as how do we judge how do we judge things off of that first game alone when it was just one inning and done, essentially. Let's see what happens here though. Second game, the righty Joe Bailey on the mound. Let's see what we can do. Adele grounds out. Lux with a one out double. Tarong strikes out, Walker grounds out, and we are out of it. Sick glasses from Correa. Quinlan grounds out, Edwards with the solo shot. Again, kicking things off in style. I like it. Bobby Bloom and Archie May can't follow up, but Graham Edwards, the difference maker, we get the one run in the bottom of the first as Joe Bailey, a two-out solo shot given up to Cole Stobie. This one's tied. So close to getting out of that inning there. And it's a one, two, three. For the Mets, Correa grounds out, Adele and Lux can't get anything going, and it's very obvious we're going to have ourselves a different game. A very different game, at least at the moment. Another two-out hit, this one's Phillips. They can't have a follow-up, though. Only four hits through three and a half innings. Edwards with a single, stepping up in a big-time way here. Bobby Bloom, though, grounds into a double play, and Archie May strikes out. Rough. Let's see... What Bailey can do here, gives up a two-out single to the pitcher Correa. Does not live to regret it, though. Let's see if the offense can get going. The answer is no, as, uh, as Correa is dealing here. Lux with a leadoff single. Tarong into a double play. Walker grounds out. To the bottom of the sixth we go. Just seven hits total, two runs scored. Bryant K grounds out as he is not making the most of this opportunity. And our manager goes for a very interesting call. Bailey's day is done. Jimenez brought on the pinch hit. He does get the one-out single. Quinlan grounds into a double play as we now have to rely on the bullpen. Napoleon Gillis is in to take on Phillips, Kimura, and Stobie. And it's a 1-2-3 inning. Good stuff. Edwards leads off, grounds out. Bobby Bloom strikes out. Archie May strikes out. And Archie May is going to get dropped. He is, he is falling off here. That momentum has not carried over. As Chris Velez is brought on, Miea singles, Correa pinch hit for it's Terrell Bond who strikes out, Joe Adele into a double play to the bottom of the eighth we go. It's Arujo brought back on, Brian Lopez leads off and flies out. Marlon. Marlon's gonna, no, Marlon's done. 
Marlins done. 0 for 2 in this game. Marlins done. We are going to give the opportunity to Ramon Vasquez to step up, especially facing the righty. So let's see what Vasquez can do. He strikes out. Shipman walks. Last chance, Bryant. He walks. Velez pinch hit for it's Glenn Huff brought on, and he grounds out. Oh, man, a lot of players not making the most of the opportunities. Norman Garner is brought on. He'll face Gavin Lux, strikes him out. Tarong grounds out. Steel Walker strikes out. One, two, three inning. To the bottom of the ninth we go. One swing of the bat could do it. Joe Quinlan against Justin Schaefer. Quinlan flies out. Edwards, who's been our best player in this game, pops out. Bobby Bloom strikes out. We're going to extras. Brett Phillips will face Chad Padilla. He flies out. Kimura grounds out. Stoby, who has the solo shot for them in this game, he grounds out. We go to the bottom of the 10th. May lines out. Lopez pops out. Vasquez singles with two outs. Henry Shipman, if you don't get a hit here, you're sitting out of the next game. Pinch runner brought on it. Chavez. Shipman flies out. It's another wasted opportunity. And we'll certainly be pondering lineup changes heading in to game three in New York. Mieya with the solo shot. I don't think that's something he ever did for us in Toronto. The advantage goes to the Mets. Bruce Boyle brought on his first appearance in this series. Brent Spillane brought on as a pinch hitter. He strikes out. Adele strikes out. Lux grounds out. To the bottom of the 11th we go. Against Jason Comstock, the 99 overall. Bryant K flies out. Martin Abreu grounds out. Joe Quinlan strikes out. And the Mets win this one. A completely different game. 2-1 to one is your final. Nobody could deliver. We have had one inning of solid work. And aside from that, we have been dead silence. Chad Padilla gets charged with the loss. Graham Edwards, the solo shot in the top of the first. We could only muster four hits through 11 innings. And that is simply not good enough. As Francisco Mieya, I took a shot at him in the first game. And I live to regret it. This series is tied through two as the series shifts to New York. And again, lineup changes are going to be considered. It's Manzanillo and Baria. And we'll see what happens here. Because again, I'm just anxious. Very anxious. And desperate for some people to start delivering. So again, Manzanillo's on the mound. That's not debatable. As far as what happens outfield-wise... Again, ah, that's right. You know, I just realized I didn't switch Marlins hand in this back. My bad. My bad. Let me know if I should do that for sure. Because I don't want it to be like, oh, you cheated or anything. I just completely forgot to switch it back. <sighs> Bobby Bloom can play in left, but I don't think anybody else can play first outside of Marlins. So that doesn't matter. Henry Shipman's going to take a seat. Only six at bats, but he's been completely ineffective. Abreu's going to get the chance. And I kind of wanted someone else to play an outfield spot, but we really don't have anybody that can outside of Bobby. And no one else can play. Well, you know what? No, we are going to make that change. Bloom obviously isn't going to play center field. But we're going to have Bryant K sit. Fernando Chavez is going to get the chance. He was really hot at the end of the last season. Ramon Vasquez couldn't... I mean, nah, it's got to be Vasquez. If Vasquez struggles, Chavez gets the chance. Vasquez can play first. Vasquez can play first. I didn't even realize. You know what? I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Let's go Chavez. Um, Chavez at third. Vasquez at first, and we'll have Bobby in the outfield, which is risky as hell. Some might call this changes for the sake of changes, but I want Shipman out. Kay's had opportunities. Huff had opportunities. Marlin only had that one shot. I'm all right with these changes. Quinlan, it's kind of a tough call. 
Lopez hitting 286. You know what? I know Edwards is doing really well in the two spot, but I want him to be on a higher on a higher setup here. So we're gonna swap him. We're gonna have Edwards in the four spot. Bloom will be switched to left. Lopez 77 speed will be in center. We'll have Archie in right. And I think we're gonna drop, yeah, Archie to five, Vasquez, Chavez, and Abreu. So it does go righty, 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 lefty, lefty, righty, lefty, switch. <laughs> so there's not, you know, I do like the idea of Edwards being at second, I guess, just because of that change up. So then it goes righty, lefty, righty, lefty, switch hitter. Let's go with that. But Archie May gets dropped to the five spot. He and Lopez switch. Vasquez is in at first. Bloom to the outfield. And Chavez in at third. Martin Abreu in at catcher. We are desperate to get something going. Because again, outside of one inning, we have been far, far too quiet. Unless your name is Graham Edwards. So, it might be changes for the sake of changes. People know that's kind of my style. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. The good thing is we have the versatility in this lineup to pull this off and to give people chance and opportunity to pull this off and make this happen. We'll just see if they do. Baria on the mound, leading off against Quinlan, Edwards, and Bloom. One, two, three. Terrell Bond leading off here against Manzanillo. Spillane also in the lineup, as is Terang, who's been very quiet for them. He won't be now that I've said that. One, two, three innings for both pitchers. Lopez, singles. Archie May flies out. Vasquez flies out. Chavez into a fielder's choice. Nothing doing after the leadoff hits. Can the Mets get anything going? No, they cannot. Outside of that first inning, as Martin Abreu gets a hit, Manzanillo strikes out. Quinlan, Edwards, yikes. Outside of that first inning... It has been a defensive duel. Mieo with a hit. Stoby with another follow-up single. Another single, and the runner scores. Mieo comes across. It's 1-0 Nets. Mets. Nets. It's 1-0 Mets. I was going to say, 1-0 Mets. Next up, Spillane, and it just didn't happen. I'm nervous and anxious because, again, our offense is rather quiet right now. Lopez with a one-out double. Archie May is falling apart. Maybe he's not the real MVP. Vasquez singles. Two on, two outs for Chavez, and he cannot deliver. Ugh. One has to wonder how well we do from the calendar, Sim. Walker flies out. Adele and Phillips reaches on an error. Miea doesn't matter. He's caught stealing to the top of the fifth. We go. Abreu pops out. Manzanillo singles. Quinlan singles. Two on, one out for Edwards, who gets to second we score a run on an error so Quinlan and Edwards both in scoring position with one out for Bobby Bloom it's a tie game Bobby what can you do for us nothing Brian Lopez two for two in this game what can you do for us nothing and if we lose this series that is why Mieja leads off with the solo shot and the Mets take the lead when Francisco Mieja is more clutch than Bobby Bloom and Brian Lopez, you have a problem. Stoby grounds out. Barria strikes out. Bond pops out. To the top of the sixth we go. Archie May reaches on a single. His first hit, I believe, since the first inning of game one. Vasquez flies out. Chavez with a two-run shot. Yes. Oh, boy. I was wondering who was going to step up. We gave him an opportunity with how hot he was at the end of the season. Chavez gives us the lead. Abreu strikes out. Manzanillo flies out to the bottom of the sixth. We go. Spillane with a leadoff double. Tarang with a single. Walker grounds out. Two on. One out for Adele, who walks. Its base is loaded with one out for Brett Phillips, who will face Chris Velez. And he singles. Two runs score. The Mets regain the lead. Mieja, stolen base. Now it's two on. In scoring position with one out. Mieja walks. Stoby drives in a run. Baria, pinch hit for it. Hideki Kimura, he grounds out. Another run scores. Terrell Bond strikes out. 6-3 New York. 
<sighs> Rougeau brought on the face Quinlan. He strikes him out. Edwards and Bobby Bloom has been a disaster. Norman Garner brought on in the bottom of the seventh. Spillane, Tarang, and Walker reaches on the narrow with two outs. Adele singles. Phillips strikes out. 6-3 in the top of the eighth. Lopez against Andreas Tavares. Not the one, I believe, that we drafted. Lopez grounds out. May flies out. Vasquez flies out. We're in a lot of trouble. Napoleon Gillis faces Miea. He walks. Cole Stobie singles. Tavares. Pinch hit for it's Gavin Lux. He walks. Bases loaded. No outs for Terrell Bond. He singles home two runs. This game is over as our bullpen's falling apart. Spillane against Padilla. There's a fly out. Runners at the corners with one out. Tarang. It's a stolen base. And now two in scoring position. He singles home a run. Walker. Another stolen base. This is absurd. Walker. Run scores on an error. I mean, this game is obviously over. Fly out. Ground out. Pinch hit. Henry Shipman strike out. The Mets win it 10 to 3. <sighs> we have just not looked the same we peaked early and by early I mean through one inning the Mets are one game away from the NLCS Chavez really our only offense with that two run shot and from there the bullpen just absolutely fell apart we have seen how Francisco Mieya plays in the postseason through the Blue Jays series he is outperforming Bobby Bloom. He is outperforming an MVP candidate. I think that's our biggest problem right now. Alongside pitching, of course. We go to game four with the season on the line. I don't know who's pitching. I don't know what the lineup's going to be. It has to be Winston Medina who gets us through this. Could go Carrasco on short rest, but there's no way. He plays game five if we get there. Has to be Winston Medina to get us there. As far as the lineup is concerned, between Bryant K and Glenn Huff in center, I'm going to trust Glenn Huff. Henry Shipman will go back. I mean, Abreu does have one hit through five at bats, Shipman with nothing through seven. Ugh. Do we go with our best lineup overall, or do we reward the guys who got us here? Do we go... I just... Like, look at that, man. That's... That's why. That's why. <sighs> okay. I'm gonna be... I'm gonna be aggressive with these changes. I'm gonna be aggressive with these changes. The question is how aggressive, I suppose. In terms of the outfield, I mean, it's Bryant, and we move Bobby Bloom out there, that's it. So, let's take a look here. Between the outfielders, right, the options are between Bobby, May, Huff, Lopez, and K. So, obviously, Brian Lopez is safe. Bobby Bloom struggled, but he's safe. Then there's Archie, and then there's Huff. So, again, Glenn Huff put up a 260 average. On base of 355. K put up a 252 and on base of 330. So it's going to be Glenn, Archie, Bobby still probably at first. Or we move Bobby to the outfield. It's It's got to be Bobby in the outfield. It just has to be. It has to be. So let's do it. Bobby Bloom will play left at first. It's either Vasquez, who has a 333 average through six at bats, or it's Marlin. So between the options at first and third, it is between Marlon, you have Fernando Chavez, who of course really stepped up. I mean, just at first, it comes down to Marlon or Vasquez, and I'm going Vasquez over Marlon. So Huff is already out. So Marlon, if he wants to stay, if we look at the rest of the infield, Graham is safe. So it's just, is Marlon worth running over Jimenez or over Chavez? Quinlan at a 231 average, which isn't strong, but it's good enough to stay in. Marlon has that one hit, but he does only have six at bats. So I think Marlon's going to get the nod, and Chavez and Jimenez will sit. And I think from there, we're good. 
now it's just a matter of the order. Now it's just a matter of the order. So obviously Medina at nine, Shipman at eight. Bobby's really struggled. Archie's really struggled. I mean, in terms of leadoff, it's got to be Quinlan Lopez or Edwards. Archie as well could play there, but again, he's really struggled. So we probably stay Quinlan leadoff, Edwards second. We're going to go Brian Lopez third, just based off of, again, who actually deserves it for performance. And then from there is when things get interesting. Because we're going to go with Bloom in the four spot, Vasquez, Pugh, May, Shipman. I don't feel good about any combination right about now, but that's about as good as I'm going to feel. It's about as good as I'm going to feel. Archie May down to the seven spot. Let's do this. Let's do this. They're run are they running Cole Stewart? They are running Cole Stewart again. I don't blame them because he barely played in the first game. So they're running with their ace, Cole Stewart, again. We're having to rely on Winston Medina, fourth in our rotation, to get us through this. So again, Stewart was obliterated through two-thirds innings in game one. But since then, the offensive output from your Reds has been... Inconsistent to say the least, few and far between would be the best way that I could describe it. So let's do this. It's all or nothing. Will there be a game five back home? Or will the Reds collapse out of the playoffs just due to the pressure and the inexperience that we have on this stage? Quinlan against Stewart, he grounds out. Edwards with a single. I'm not going to be aggressive yet. Brian Lopez, field his choice. Bobby Bloom flies out. Not promising. Joe Waddell pops out. Lux ground out. Terang walks with two outs. Steel Walker pops out. We're out of the inning. Vasquez flies out. Marlin strikes out. Archie May with a two out single. Shipman flies out. So two base runners, two wasted opportunities thus far. Brett Phillips. Was it Brett or Brent? Doesn't matter. Kimura and Stoby. One, two, three inning there. Top of the third we go. Medina strikes out. Quinlan with a one out single. Edwards into a fielder's choice. Lopez strikes out. No support for Medina yet. Miea singles. Unreal the run he's been on here. Cole Stewart grounds out, moves the runner up. Adele with a double, and the Mets strike first. Lux singles. Runners at the corners with one out for Bryce Terang, who walks. Its base is loaded for Steel Walker. Sack fly is successful. Two to nothing. Brett Phillips grounds out. The Mets have the lead. Bobby Bloom with a one-out or a leadoff single, I should say. Vasquez into a double play. Marlin with a two-out single. Archie May grounds out. Brutal. Kamara with a fly-out. Stoby grounds out. Mieo with a two-out double. I cannot believe how good he's been. Cole Stewart, though, grounds out. To the top of the fifth we go. We're out hitting them 5-4, to four, but we're down 2 to nothing. Shipman strikes out. Brutal. Medina strikes out. Quinlan grounds out. And you can just see it falling apart here. Joe Adell flies out. Lux grounds out. Terang with a strikeout. Solid 1 2 3 inning there for Medina as Edwards leads off with a strikeout. Lopez grounds out. Bloom strikes out. <sighs> Walker with a ground out. Phillips with a one out single. Kimura into a field of choice. Stoby with a two run shot. 4 to nothing, Mets. And our backs are against the wall here. Eduardo Herrera's brought on. Miea flies out. Top of the seventh. And we're in desperation. Vasquez walks. Marlon Pugh flies out. Archie May with a two-run shot. And we're back in it. Archie May, finally. Something from him. Something that resembles the MVP candidate that we have. Shipman with a single. Herrera... As Schaefer's brought on for the Mets, Herrera pinch hit for it's Glenn Huff. Can he earn his way back into our good graces? He cannot. Quinlan with two outs, walks. Graham Edwards, who has been our best player in this series. Two on, two outs. <sighs> Come on, Graham. This is, this is a major, major moment. They bring on Paul Fry. Graham Edwards. 
all the pressure in the world, buddy. We need this, and I swear to God, if he strikes out here, then I'm never going to watch something like this again because that's it happens every time. Every time I've ever done this, it feels like someone uh, just grounds out or strikes out. <sighs> Come on, Graham. Come on. We need this so badly. One of the faces of the franchise, Graham Edwards, swings. Fly ball to left. <sighs> Another wasted opportunity as Napoleon Gillis is brought on. I can just stay from here, I guess. So let's see. Adams with a fly out. Adele with a solo shot. And we're dead in the water. We are dead in the water. No doubt in my mind at this point. No doubt. Luck strikes out. Terang grounds out. Willie Medeiros brought on in the top of the eighth to face Brian Lopez, who strikes out. Bobby Bloom. Unbelievable. Vasquez strikes out, and we are just screwed. Norman Garner gives up a leadoff double to Walker. Phillips doubles him home. Six to two. Kamara with a two run shot. And the Cincinnati Reds are going to crash and burn out of the postseason in brutal, brutal fashion. Pedro Arujo brought on. Marlon Pugh strikes out. Archie May with a solo shot. You showed up, Archie, but it was too little too late. Down by five. Shipman strikes out. Bryant K grounds out. The Mets win three straight games. They are going to the NLCS, more than likely to take on San Diego. What started off so, so promisingly with that first inning of game one ended up being the highlight. I give Archie May credit, two home runs, three RBIs in this game, but that doesn't erase him being all but invisible in the first three games. It doesn't impress me that it took me, you know, it would have impressed me if I didn't have to drop you to seventh in the order to get something out of you. That Mets team, better than us, probably, but I do feel like we embarrassed ourselves. Carrasco did get the win. Bailey pitched a gem and didn't get rewarded. Manzanillo was roughed up, and Medina roughed up at the end. Bullpen-wise, Herrera only threw, you know, a third of an inning. Napoleon Gillis was horrific. Chris Velez was okay, but he only pitched two innings. Padilla was fairly strong. Norman Garner was brutal. And we only saw Will Vincent in game one. Lineup-wise, Joe Quinlan, 16 at-bats, 2 RBIs, 250 average. Not good enough. Graham Edwards, 1 home run, 1 RBI. Not really good enough, but the average was there. Could have argued bumping him up to leadoff, I suppose. But, yeah. I, I can't complain about Edwards having a 350 average. But obviously, in terms of production, eh, he was fine. That's the reason we lost. I'm sorry, but Bobby Bloom needs to shoulder. Bobby need, and Archie, for that matter. I'm sorry. Archie May finishing with a 313 average, two home runs, four RBIs. That's not good enough. We needed that throughout the course of the four games, not just in game four and at the beginning of game one. Not good enough. But Bobby Bloom absolutely let us down. Absolutely let us down. He was a little bit off this season compared to what he had done in seasons past, and he just wasn't ready for prime time on this one. Brian Lopez, despite regressing, was okay. Marlon had that one moment in game one, and that was it. Henry Shipman was horrific. And his spot on this team in the future is very much up in the air. Bryant K did nothing. Chavez continued to impress. And we might have some, you know, a decent player there moving forward. Glenn Huff, not good enough. Abreu, I mean better than Shipman. Jimenez did okay in his two at-bats. And Ramon Vasquez was okay, but not great. Eight innings, or eight runs in the first inning. And then... A whole lot of nothing from there for the most part. That's how I view it. Perhaps you view it in a different light. Let me know if you do, as the Mets are indeed moving on to play San Diego. Let me know how you view that. Was it a failure of the team as the Red Sox end up beating the Mets? Take that, 1986. 
The Red Sox end up beating the Mets in the World Series in seven games. So let me know with all that we know, knowing that we lost to a team that was in that was within one win of winning the whole damn thing. Let me know how you view it. Is it down to how we set up the team going into the series? Is it down to the pitching failing, the uh, the lineup failing? Is it down to my own mismanagements? Let me know what you think. Again, for this team, I'll give you a look at what we're going to have to deal with moving forward as uh, World Series MVP was David Min, the 30-year-old South Korean who is going to be a Hall of Famer at this rate. MVP Alex Reyes. Actually, nope, I wanted uh, postseason MVP Joe Adele and Jared Kalinich. So there is that as we will advance to the offseason. Our manager and third base coach contracts have expired. Let's take a look here. We do not lose. Ah, we do lose Richie Sorvala. Sorvala is gone. Aside from that, we don't lose anybody else that we had under contract. Do we have any Hall of Famers? We do not. Will Vincent is the big name that's up. The 30-year-old. He's looking for $10 million a season. Obviously, we're going to bring him back. That's not even a debate. So thankfully, this time out, we don't really have any major contracts to deal with. Manager-wise, is there someone who makes all the sense in the world? Roosevelt Howell would be a strong signing. Or Trevor McMillan. We don't need speed and bunt improvements, though. Howell's contact discipline hits and speed. Richie, Richie. Let's go for Quentin Richie again. Uh, let's go for the four years... We'll make it like a six million dollar offer. What do you think? Yeah, I don't. I'm not surprised you like that. Third base coach. Let's go for Sean Bruno. Durability, arm strength, stealing, and speed. Minus two durability there. Reaction accuracy, fielding, and speed. Blocking, durability, speed, and fielding. Blocking, speed, fielding, and stealing. I gotta be honest. I think. I think I like uh, the wall roundedness of Trey Hurd, who I think we just had. Wasn't he the option before? Give him a decent contract as well. Let's get this contract with uh, Will Vincent over and done with. Like, obviously, there's no debate that he's being signed. When do we get to diminishing returns? Ten years again, which he'll retire before the end of that. We'll also give him the player option, and we'll try to save as much money here as possible. I'll get these negotiations done so you can see the other big names that are up, and that way we can make that decision on what to do. So I'm going to send him a $90 million offer. We have six days to work this out. So let's sim two days here. He still hasn't accepted, so that is fine. Same thing here. So the $90, uh, $90 million offer wasn't enough. Let's try 93. See if that's good enough. Oof, yeah. Mm. All right, we'll try the old 95. <laughs> Just try to save whatever money here that we can. Actually, let's go 97 and a half. It'll be a little bit more, a little bit more value. And Richie signed. Trey Hearn's gone to the Red Sox. I don't blame him. Uh, so let's try and get a different third base coach in. And it's, let's go for Bruno. Yeah, let's just go for Bruno here then. I'm surprised Trey Hearn rejected. I, there's no way we didn't offer him the most money. But uh, with Richie, or uh, with Richie, obviously with Vincent, qualifying offer just in case this goes poorly. Again, let's, uh, let's try this. So we tried the 97. Let's go 100 million over 10 years. $10 million a year for one of the best closers in the game. Bruno's gone to the Nationals. And Will Vincent still hasn't signed. He might take a step towards free agency. Which would be devastating. But there is a chance. Shinji Barnhart will try to bring in here. <sighs> See if we can get him to sign. So Will, I'll send you one final offer, buddy. It'd be devastating to lose you. But let's go with uh, 102.5. So 10.3 million a year. You know, at that point, it's diminishing in terms of how much money we're even saving. So let's just go the $10.5 million a year. See what happens. Did Will Vincent sign? He did. Okay, cool. So Will Vincent is back. We weren't able to save that much money. 
but he is here. 343 career saves on a team this bad for the majority of it. It's pretty crazy. In terms of the big names, this is what we have to worry about. Joe Quinlan, who is looking for only $9 million bucks, so obviously he'll stay. Marlon is looking for only 5 6 if we sign him for three years, so that's not too bad. That's not too bad, but would it be better for Marlon uh, for us to get compensation for him? Winston Medina, that's an affordable deal. Again, though, you could make the argument maybe he's worth letting go of, so let me know. Uh, Norman Garner, who was brutal in the postseason, but absolutely worth keeping. Uh, Napoleon Gillis, probably still worth keeping as well. He's looking for about 2-5. Garner looking for a little bit more. Downside to Garner, he wants to be the closer now. And then you have the likes of Lincoln Post, and then other big-time moves. Steve Carrasco, obviously. So we'll figure out all that. But those are the big moves. Let me know if there's anyone who you don't think we should keep out of the big names there. Again, let me know what you think of the playoff situation as well. In the next episode, we set up this team for the next season. We'll hopefully get the team set up and hopefully get to the next year's draft as well. The good news is, of course, we had some good talent join this team. Orlando Rosas, Tom Lau's only getting better. Uh, Henry Lewis, of course, was a big-time signing. And then the guys like you know, Valencia and everything were looking really good. This is, this is the peak right here. These are the prime years coming up. It's just whether or not we can get the job done. Thank you guys for watching and supporting the series. I will see you in the next one. Until then... Have a good one.